We're back with our next inductee, Bart Kaufman, Hall of Famer for 2017, our 184th inductee. And Mr. Kaufman, it's really a pleasure uh, you being here. Congratulations on, on your induction. We look forward to your, uh, to your speech tonight. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, your baseball life. How did you get... Uh, well, it started before my life because uh, it really did because uh, I went to the um, 1940 World Series uh, in utero with my mother. Um, she was an avid baseball fan in Cincinnati. And um, so um, I wasn't born until the following March, but I was there, uh, saw the Reds beat the uh, Detroit Tigers. Um, my whole uh, growing up was uh, baseball. Uh, basketball was uh, a, of course, growing up in Indiana, basketball is a big factor of any boy's life. And my lifelong dream was to play at Butler Field House in the state finals and walk out there and look at the four corners and see that it was filled. And that wasn't to be. Uh, my uh, talents uh, uh, were in. Uh, whatever talents I had were in baseball. Uh, my dad, I remember as a child, my dad was hopeful that I was going to be six feet five. And I, uh, my dad was about six one or six two. He was born in 1903. So he was a big man. He played center uh, against uh, Franklin Wonder Five. Uh, my dad grew up in Shelbyville. Franklin was in um, uh, uh, 20 miles away. and. Franklin had great, first great basketball teams in Indiana uh, with the Wonder Five. And so my dad was always interested in basketball and, and refereed many state final games. And uh, he was a, a very um, interested in basketball. My interest was in basketball, but I realized that you know, my real, whatever abilities I had were better served in, uh, in baseball. And uh, so I remember as a child being six, seven years old, and my father used to come in at night when he would kiss me goodnight, and he would straighten me out in the bed and pull on my ankles, <laughs> thinking that maybe that would help me grow to be six five. And I remember telling him when I got to be about thirteen or fourteen, and I was to be five ten. And I said to him, Dad, if you wanted a 6'5 son, you should have married a woman that was taller than 4'10". <laughs> and, uh, but that's what he, uh, uh, baseball was what my interest was. Uh, you got quite a resume here of uh, personal achievements. And uh, of course, I'm being an Indiana University fan, the facility down in Bloomington's, uh, you know, got uh, your name on it. and. Uh, Talk a little bit about how you got involved. In well, that. what had happened was is that my dad again was a man who had a great interest in philanthropy, um, uh, not only um, uh, funding uh, youth sports but community charities. And the, he started the Shelby County United Fund back in the 50s, and um, my dad was always willing to share. He, he made a very good living in the life insurance business where I work with him and he wanted to give back. And so I wanted to also um, do that. My, it was kind of honoring my family plus the fact that they had a big need. We played when Dell played there and I played there. Um, it was called Sembauer Field and it was nothing more than just a, a windy knoll, uh, knoll up on uh, with tremendous wind in the spring and March and, and uh, they put up a fence and called it a baseball place, a baseball stadium. It was nothing, it was just a piece of ground and uh, it was horrendous and uh, it stayed there from the uh, early 50s uh, and would probably still be there uh, and I just thought that uh, hopefully that uh, we could do better and um, we had an athletic director who, uh, most of the athletic directors, they, the Big Ten didn't have much money. Uh, Indiana football always being so uh, less than competitive, um, uh, they didn't have the money at Indiana that they had at uh, Michigan, Ohio State, Wisconsin, schools like that. So Indiana was really in tough shape uh, financially. 
they gave very few baseball scholarships. Um, when I played, uh, they gave like two, uh, and they were based on need. And your dad had to have income to so much or whatever. And fortunately, my dad was uh, able to pay my way, and and uh, the team that we had was comprised of guys like that whose fathers were being able to pay, and some others uh, who weren't. And uh, but there was very little financial support because baseball <coughs> didn't they didn't have the money to to, to do it. Uh, Purdue was in the same position. And Purdue, uh, uh, what saved both Indiana and Purdue was the ability to use uh, multi-sport athletes, which today they won't let them do it. The coaches, because the, sta the uh, seasons last so long, they don't let it happen. So uh, a, a youngster who might be a fine baseball player, his uh, career is over before it ever starts because the basketball coach wants him to play AAU all summer. Uh, and the football coach wants to start to practice the 1st of July. Uh, and they want to continue till December. So um, uh, baseball players, and, and when I was there, uh, in order to make it better, uh, the uh, basketball team, uh, uh, Branch McCracken, uh, let the kids, his kids who wanted to play baseball, play. And uh, uh, on my team was Bob Reinhardt, who was a, uh, a Hall of Famer in every respect, including the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame starting in, uh, in, uh, in March. And uh, Reine, uh was a bas on a basketball scholarship. Uh, Dick Sparks, who threw harder than anybody I ever played with, uh, he was a basketball player. Um, Charlie Hall was, uh, started on that great team with Walt Bellamy in 1960. Uh, Charlie was a pitcher, Ernie Wilhoyt, who was a basketball player. So we picked up these extra players to play baseball, but baseball was always the red-headed stepchild of uh, Indiana University Athletics. And uh, I remember once, one night, we were coming into, um, uh, we played Moorhead, Kentucky, and we got off the bus and we were in a flea trap. I mean, it was a flea trap that we were going to go, and if any of our parents would have seen where we were going to sleep, they would have brought us home. I mean, it was terrible. I could never tell my parents where we were sleeping that night. And um, uh, there were uh, prostitutes in the, li in the lobby, and I mean, it was, I mean, other than that, it was really a bad place <laughs> to, to, to be. And um, <clears throat> this one player on our team, our first baseman, a guy named Russ Maddock, and he got off the bus and he was stepping down on the steps and he looked at this place and he said, there are only nine teams in the Big Ten. And that was true because <clears throat> we went to Moorhead, Kentucky on our spring trip. Uh, now baseball, uh, they're coming to Arizona. In fact, I'm going to host them for dinner. Indiana opens up in, in Surprise, Arizona. <clears throat> and uh, they go to Florida, they do all this stuff. Well. Why are they doing this? They're doing it because of the Big Ten Network. The Big Ten Network's like an ATM, and it just spits out all this money, and uh, people at Indiana and Purdue uh, are looking for ways to spend it. So Purdue built a new softball stadium, Bittinger Stadium, and they built a new uh, baseball facility, Alexander uh, Field, and uh, uh, these uh, schools have cleaned up their facilities and made great facilities because of the, big, the money that's come from the Big Ten Network. So um, I saw in the 90s, uh, I had donated money for a chair uh, in life insurance at the School of Business, at the Kelly School of Business, and they, um, uh, they had three deans in five years, and they decided they didn't want to teach uh, life insurance in the School of Business. Well. That's what I've done my whole career, and I love my business. Worked in it all day to day, uh, and it's a great business. And they didn't want to teach it. Uh, the faculty, uh, the same kind of people that are uh, down there uh, uh, making decisions that many of us don't agree with, uh, those uh, they didn't want to teach it. Uh, they were interested in different things. So uh, my money was sitting there, not doing anything. It, and I was paying them all this money, and it was sitting there in a, in a, in a fund. And um, the head of the IU Foundation said, well, Bart, why don't you give it to the uh, 
um, will replace Sembauer Field. So I said, that makes sense to me. And so I, um, uh, we were going to do it. Well, we had an athletic director who was um, not so interested. And he didn't want to be bothered with it. And he was more concerned about Bob Knight and things and fell into football stadium. So he didn't want to be bothered with the uh, baseball. So um, uh, even though I offered uh, uh, two-thirds of the amount of money that it would take to build it, he said, uh, uh, we can't raise the other third. And I said, you can't raise the other third? And so he said, no. So uh, I gave the money to the law school. I was so mad. I gave the money to the law school in honor of my tax professor who really taught me uh, estate tax, a wonderful man named William Oliver. You go to Bloomington, you see Oliver Winery. Well, Oliver Winery was uh, Bill Oliver, who was a tax professor who taught me. And um, so then, uh, several years later, there was another athletic director, about the fifth and six years kind of thing, and um, uh, he uh, decided that he wanted to um, build a new baseball facility, and he had to build a softball facility too because of Title IX. So uh, you couldn't have a baseball facility, you had to have a baseball and a softball facility. So uh, that was okay, I have three daughters and I'm happy for that. But um, uh, the thing is, is that uh, uh, in all candor, uh, the softball doesn't draw flies. I mean, in a way there. But they have this great facility and parking lot with empty uh, asphalt, and it's sitting there. But they uh, going to build. But they had to do that to build a baseball facility. So um, uh, they came to me and said, "Would you? I know you've given the money to the law school, and, and but would you uh, give more money to us to do baseball?" And uh, I thought, "Well, I've already been through this now. It's 15 years." And um, but uh, uh, the next athletic director uh, was a guy named Rick Greenspan. And he was interested in baseball because his son played. And so he sure didn't know how to pick football coaches or basketball coaches, but Greenspan did know um, that it was that we needed new facilities. And the problem was with Bob Knight because Knight never wanted to, uh, Assembly Hall needed to be fixed up. It was a dump and it was built in 1970 and it was not competitive with the new facilities at the Cole Center in Madison or the, uh, uh, the uh, um, arena in, at Ohio State and they had these nice new facilities in Indiana uh, one time Assembly Hall was okay but it did fall up behind times but Knight didn't care he thought he liked the charm of like Duke which was a dump and uh, so Knight would never want to raise any money for it, and it just was a, it was terrible. No, not enough toilets, and, and, and it was so obviously until they got that taken care of, nothing was going to get done with regards to baseball or softball or anything else. So they decided that they would, uh, Greenspan uh, decided that they would uh, allocate money for a baseball facility. So then the ATM of the Big Ten Network came up and they came back to me and this is my gift there, it was really nothing like, uh, um, uh, I didn't pay for that facility uh, in full, I just paid a part of it, but I was the biggest uh, uh, sucker they had to give more money. I gave more money than anybody else, so I guess I got to put my name on it. Uh, it wasn't because I was the greatest hitter that was ever there, Ted Klesuski was the greatest hitter that was ever there. And Kyle Schwarber may be the greatest hitter that was ever there, at least right. a left-hand hitter. Right. So that's how the baseball thing came. So I gave him the money, and it's the best thing that I ever did as far as fun, because it's with great pride that every time that I see in the Big Ten Network, Bart Kaufman Field, you know, right. hey, that was fun, and it was all because of baseball. And playing, and the best thing about baseball was playing with guys that are here, uh, like Dell and others, who were, that we kept these relationships for forever. I mean, uh, Carl Erskine, which I'm going to mention in my speech, was very, very, very important. I wouldn't be here at all today without Carl Erskine, right. what he did for me. Right. And so 
that's what uh, uh, that's what baseball really is. I sure enjoyed it. I, I'm one of the few people that likes it. Dell is this way too. That, but for there are very few of us that like it to watch it as much as to play it. Um, I love to play and played it until I was 72 years old. I had five joint replacements and I'm still playing. And um, it was not very well. And finally, after the last year, I'm now 75, and that was three years ago, and I went to the Reds Fantasy Camp, and I came home, and my wife says, how did it go? And I said, well, I don't know whether God intended 72-year-old men to play baseball, but he didn't intend this one. Uh, I mean, it was pitiful. I was so terrible. And uh, so then I finally uh, burned the uniform. And well, that's uh, quite a story. Uh, Bart, can you, uh, in summary here, can you kind of wrap this up? And uh, what's this honor mean to you personally? Well, what it means is I'm getting old. And uh, this is uh, the, the third uh, uh, Hall of Fame that I've been selected to belong to in the last couple of years. Um, and uh, what it means is it's just an achievement of, of baseball and what baseball means. And it's not easy to be a baseball player in Indiana. Uh, we're not Texas, we're not Arizona. I have a home, I just came home last night from Arizona for this event. And uh, there, here it is, January the 18th 20th. or 20th. 20th. And uh, we go past every baseball field, they're lighted, they're playing now. This is January 20th and they're playing. And uh, here we are and dreaming about it in the gym, taking ground balls on the basketball floor. And I mean, that's how we took them. And most of them went right between my legs. Uh, and it was very hard to go play in another stadium that didn't have grass as smooth as this tabletop, uh, which is where it was in, in there. So uh, Indiana and the compliment to compliment to coaches uh, who have done this. When I played, there were very few kids from Indiana playing in the major leagues. Now they're all over. Uh, the boy Parker and uh, the kids, Reds, Reds are going to have a battery of Indiana kids from the west side of Indianapolis with Storin and, and uh, Barnhart. And uh, their kids uh, all over it's because of the coaches. Good coaching and uh, emphasis and good training techniques. Uh, they never had any batting cages. I used to go to Cincinnati to hit on a machine and uh, go there and uh, there were no batting cages in Shelbyville or Indiana, even in Indianapolis. And now there's all kinds of equipment and all kinds of coaching and videos and training and it's because of the coaches and the coaches that are here and the coaches who were before us and afterwards. I had a terrible experience in high school with my coach and he coached because he got an extra three hundred dollars from the school board and he didn't care and he just basically threw the bats and balls out on the field and said okay baseball time and uh, it was awful and if it wouldn't have been for Carl sending me to Dodger Town then that that changed my life but uh, it's the coaches in Indiana that have made Indiana because the weather hadn't gotten any better in the last 50 years despite of what the administration says weather's still terrible in January and February <laughs> and March and April in Indiana so that's it well just want to offer you my congratulations I've not been to the facility, uh, but I've seen it on the Big Ten Network. I know uh, Indiana's going to host the Big Ten Tournament this year. And, I had uh, nothing to do with the design or anything else. They did it. They get all the kudos. Uh, they did a wonderful job of making it uh, fan-friendly, player-friendly, facility-friendly. I mean, it's a big honor for Indiana to be given the Big Ten the tournament. I mean, when you think about where the two venues have been the last two years, Omaha, where they have the College World Series, and Minneapolis, where the Twins play, and now they're coming to Bart Kaufman Field. You think that would make me pretty happy? You bet it does. Absolutely. And I'm looking forward to it. Well, again, congratulations uh, on your honor, and uh, we look forward to your speech tonight. Thank, okay. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you.